Welcome to High Infidelity. The best cheating videos on YouTube. If you enjoy this content, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Now let's get into the video. Caught husband in an affair, 17 weeks pregnant and considering abortion. Feels like my life is over. I am of Indian descent, although I was reared in Canada. I moved to the United States for college, met my spouse, and the rest is history. My spouse is Caucasian, and I had to defy my family in order to marry him. I've lost acquaintances, cousins, and family members. They shunned me because I married outside of my race and faith. I even became a Christian because his family desired it. I'm 28 years old, my spouse is 31 years old, and we've been married for two years. He was my rock, he constantly stated he loved me and would always be there for me. He was a kind and caring individual. We were celebrating his grandmother's birthday and my pregnancy last month when I noticed him seeming annoyed and distant. He remained aloof and distant for the next several days. He eventually left on an official trip and returned after about two weeks. He maintained his chilly and aloof demeanor. I spotted him dozing off on the couch while drinking last week. His phone had been unlocked. I couldn't stop myself from looking through his phone. He has this app called Kick, and I noticed chats to this one lady going back to March 2019. They were obviously in a love connection. I discovered that he was in an EA slash PA relationship with this lady and that he was definitely in love with her. He told her in his messages to wait until our unborn kid was older, that he couldn't leave me with a baby, and that love is patient and compassionate, essentially begging her to wait for him until our child was older. He also assured her that she would make an excellent surrogate mother foe. Then I discovered her communications in which she informed him of her pregnancy. They both agreed that the time was inconvenient and that they would have an abortion. He vowed to remain by her side throughout the procedure and to take care of her while she healed. He also assured her that they would have children and marry. One day, my thoughts were racing. I took screenshots and photos of the text before leaving our flat to handle the shock. I drove to a co-worker's residence, where he invited me to spend the night. I can't even remember what I was going to say the following morning. I simply feel like I made a tremendous mistake by marrying this guy and defying my family. I am aware that divorce is the best solution. I don't want to be a single mother for the rest of my life because of an unfaithful ex-husband. My family is still unaware of my pregnancy, and I believe that if I had an abortion and a divorce, I will be able to repair my connection with my family. I really enjoy my in-laws, and they were overjoyed about the kid, but I just can't do it. This pregnancy and this marriage must come to an end. Story 2. Male 29 found out today, my girlfriend female 27 of 6 months made plans for her ex-boyfriend to pick her up at the airport. My girlfriend and I traveled to a different state for a weekend trip. This weekend, I was there to cheer her on and encourage her as she ran in the marathon. We also agreed to meet up with her family and go sightseeing together. She presently resides in a different state than me, I just bought a home, and she is completing her semester of school, so we have been apart for the previous four months with bi-monthly trips to see one other. We were out for lunch today, and before leaving to the airport, I was checking the timings for the airport lounges on her phone when her XBF texted her, I got you. He had asked her the night before if she wanted a lift back from the airport, and she had said, yes, PLZZ. I then browsed through her communication, I know it's not the best thing to do, but I was so stunned by what I saw, and discovered she had been messaging him all weekend while we were together on and off with her family. She told him about the marathon and shared the beverages and restaurants we were dining at with him. He said, we have go soon, and… She responded, yes, he added, you're so adorable, and she said, Zoxo. What's odd is that there seemed to be no past interactions prior to this weekend, as if she hadn't talked to him since they split up, or she wiped their history before being around me. I got a crazy feeling in my stomach, so I addressed her right there in the restaurant. When I confronted her about it, she said she was going to ask me about his bringing her up at the airport, but didn't want to bring it up while we were out eating. We communicate every day, and I had no idea she was still seeing her ex. I discovered out today from her that she saw him three weeks ago, but only because she missed their buddy group. She said that she hadn't spoken to him in a long time except for this weekend. 
but I questioned her why she was giving him so much face when so many other people were questioning her race. Why is she doing this when I am with her and seeming to conceal it she announces other people's reactions slash text to her? In what universe is it okay for your ex-boyfriend to pick you up from the airport without informing your current boyfriend? I had previously told her that I didn't mind as she was friends with her ex. They had been together for eight months before she left him to be with me and I genuinely felt horrible for him. But I would want to know if they ever saw one other. I've essentially had a number of red lights thrown in my face as a result of this and I no longer trust her. I told her I didn't want to be with her any longer because she had lost my respect and I didn't trust her or her communication. I'm not sure what I anticipate from you guys. I'm simply on the aircraft back home, complaining on the internet. Story 3 My girlfriend 19 female told me 20 male she needed time. So we've been boyfriends in a long-distance relationship for two years. I met her in real life before being boyfriends. She lives in France and I in Mexico, and because of the time difference and the boarding school, we don't get to talk much. Saturdays are the days we can call or video call more, but most of the week we call at night for her, and because of that and all the tiring stuff like school and life itself, she falls asleep very quickly. We had some debates before but they were mostly about trivial matters or the state of our relationship. Nevertheless, once we get to video call or conference, the troubles vanish and we are overjoyed to see each other, even if it is just via a screen. We were not discussing but talking about our relationship last Thursday, she told me she feels very lost in a lot of things and she doesn't know what to do or feel. Maybe I pressed her a little too telling her that I was lost too and I don't know what to do with my life either, but what I know I really want is her to be by my side. So at one point I told her maybe you need some time. If you want I can give you space so you can think, and that felt like a bullet. I know it doesn't mean we broke up, but I felt very sad since that day and I just want her to be happy and okay and things to be the same as before, on the other hand, I don't want to be egoist and force her to choose me or choose to stay with me. I want to give her some time so she can be really sure of what she wants. We called last Saturday and I asked her why she needed time and she said she feels very lost in a lot of things. She has some very important things next year. She has to decide her career. She has to do a very complicated exam and a lot more things are going on in her life, including the fact that we plan to be together in France for a month in 2022 and the of coronavirus is up things again for the flights and that stuff. I told her she didn't have to go through this alone, that I was here, and that there are many things we can do to make things better and back to way they were, but she said we needed time to think about our relationship. We both sobbed a lot throughout the call. Then she went to sleep, and I sat there, listening to her breathing and weeping on silent. I haven't bothered her since then, and she hasn't sent me any messages either. It's so difficult for me. Every hour that passes knowing we're not okay seems like years. I'm a very lonely person, I have no friends, and all I do is work to be able to pay for the ticket flight to Paris that I'm not even sure if I'm going to buy. I can live without her. I have done it many times in my life. But the thing is I don't really want to, I love her and she gives me so much peace and calm, and it hurts me because she is the only person I talk to. And now, I pass the day looking at my for a lot of things in my life. I've been a sad person, and I've told her about how sad it was to be apart from her, but I also tell her that she makes me the happiest and that even if we wanted to, we can't always be happy. But she's the type of person who always has a smile on her face and always brings good vibes. And she told me that she wanted me to be happy. And that sometimes I seemed more sad than happy, which is one of the reasons she needs time, because she wants the best for both of us. And it's very sad that we've been boyfriends for two years and haven't met a single time except the time we fell in love in Mexico. If anybody sees this, please advise me on what I should do. I genuinely want her back, but I also want her to be happy, and I want the best for her. Should I simply wait? Should I send her messages? Should I take any action? Or should I simply wait till she texts me? I'm afraid she won't text me for a long time or maybe never again. I'm afraid of losing her, but I'm also afraid of her being with me just for me and not for her. I'm even afraid of her coming back. What should I do if she does? Will everything return to normal? Please assist.